gives me great pleasure to introduce a gentleman who um, I actually first met when I was trying to get into this club and um, Dan Burak brought me here and I went to see Rich and he said, I told him I had been program chair before and he said, let me see your book. And I brought him a book that was about yay thick and he said, okay, you're in if you're program chair. <laughs> He's a great guy. Rich Friedman, uh, married to Nancy. They have a son and a daughter and most important of all, they have five grandsons. Rich was in marketing. He is a teacher when he wants to be. Uh, they also uh, work with uh, therapy dogs, correct Rich? Yes. And he is um, going to talk about, he is the Rotary District 789 Youth Coordinator, and he's going to tell us what's going on, and uh, please give uh, a warm Rotary welcome to Richard Friedman. Hey. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back here. It's a pleasure to eat your lunches after uh, I'm a member of the Hamden Wil Wilbraham Club. And I can only tell you that Twin Hills Country Club certainly uh, uh, outshines our location for uh, culinary arts. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk today about the uh, Rotary Long-Term and Short-Term Exchange Program. This program was started about 75 years ago uh, in the United States. It actually originated in Europe be, uh, right after the First World War and made the jump to the United States uh, right around World War II. Um, right now there are 8,000 um, 8, kids that are exchanged each year between about 42 different countries. And this encompasses both the short-term and long-term program. Let me explain to you what the difference is in programs. The long-term program accepts kids 15 to 18 and a half. They will accept kids that who have graduated from high school and will use it as a gap year. The kids that we're looking for um, are positive, upbeat, confident, usually in the top 40% of the class. It's not necessary to be the prom queen or the captain of the football team. Uh, it's necessary to be able to go into a foreign country and embrace your new, never seen before host mother when you get off the plane, okay? Long-term exchange. Um, applications are available right now on exchangestudent.org. That is our website. All the information is there applications, the countries that you can go to, and all the information about the program. Once you fill out an application, you should contact your local Rotary Club, in this case East Long Meadow. Uh, the East Long Meadow then may interview the candidate. If not, they'll be inter interviewed uh, the first Saturday of December at Springfield College by a group of people from the district, a district committee. At that point, we will interview both the um, young man or young women. Actually, women uh, dominate the program. About 70% of all outgoing kids uh, are young ladies. Okay? Um, we're looking for kids that are confident, smile, probably have some background in a foreign language and feel confident also that they can do well abroad. We will interview both the mother and father and young man or young lady and we'll give a recommendation on the spot. If they're accepted in the program, they'll be assigned a, pro, uh, a country, uh, one hopefully of their ch uh, choosing. They get to choose their top five choices and uh, around December the 20th, um, they're greeted with an email that says you've been accepted and you will be going to Thailand or Germany or France or whatever. The top countries that we exchange with are Brazil, Germany, France, Japan, um, and those are in the double digits. 
this district, District 7890, which in, uh, incorporates Western Massachusetts and the top third of Connecticut, comprising, what, 59 or 60 Rotary Clubs, each year sends out about five kids. We're sending out four, uh, five girls this year. And they're going to be going to Germany, Argentina, Finland, Peru, and um, Brazil. Okay? Two of them have already left. Okay? And they will, uh, they will uh, join their host families and their school year uh, will start at various times. In Latin America, the school year starts at a different time than September. So typically there's a short period of time that they go in one school year and then their vacation and then they go into their next. The uh, long-term program typically runs from late August until June or early July. The kids will stay with one to three host families. Those host families will house them, feed them, transport them. They are not allowed to drive. They're not allowed to date. They're not allowed to do drugs. They're not allowed to do any dumb things. Okay? They're not allowed to get tattoos or get more piercings. We had a young man that went to South Africa. Unbeknownst to us, he dyed his hair purple. The Rotarian in South Africa had <clears throat> a picture of this young man, and as this young man came into the baggage claim, he looked at the picture and he thought that this was a Rotarian coming for South Africa. He went up to the young man and says, do you happen to be John Jones? He says, I am. And he said, um, I am from Rotary, and this is who we're looking for. This is the picture of the young man that we're looking for. Tonight, you will be getting rid of your purple hair. Okay, thank you very much. And you will be wearing a uniform with a tie to school. So, um, it's an interesting experience for these kids. Typically, when they are accepted and they know where they're going, they're asked to brush up on their language skills because many of the countries expect them to be able to go into a Rotary Club within the first month and put on a short presentation. Okay? So if you happen to be going to Japan and you can only say hello and goodbye, it will be a very short presentation. Okay? By Christmas, our students will be dreaming in that language. By the end of the year, they'll be fluent in that language. Um, and our kids will do everything that a high school student does in, various, in those various countries. Okay? This year we just got back our outbound students. They were in Ecuador. They were in Colombia. They were in Italy. Uh, they were in France. And they had a marvelous time. So that's long term. 15 to 18 and a half gap year if necessary or if required and uh, each of the countries have their specific requirements and we can share that, those with you when you apply. We also have a program called the short term program that is not for those as adventurous. Um, those kids it's more that operates like a family to family exchange. Okay. You don't want it to affect your sports seasons, your high school romances, your leadership programs and positions in college or in high school. So you spend a month abroad and then you live with a family which is selected by Rotary and they, they pair you with a family that has um, a young man, a young ma daughter or a young woman the same age as you. So you go, you live with that family, you do whatever 16 and 17 year old high school students do, and then you together get on a plane and come back here for a month. It's a remarkable program. The cost of the program for two months is $300 in fees, which covers insurance, 
plus the cost of an airline ticket. Okay? So it's very, very inexpensive. I happen to have two grandsons who have gone to Spain and Ecuador, and they've just loved the program. So that's pretty much how it works from a mechanical standpoint. One of the interesting things is that when you take a look at these kinds of programs, there are about 90 different programs that are sanctioned by the Department of State. And that's what kind of rules us. They dictate all the rules and regulations that we fall under. Uh, so when we market the program, we talk about a scholarship program because this is basically a scholarship. A long-term program is a scholarship program because Rotary, once you're accepted, your school is taken care of, your housing is taken care of, your food is taken care of, and believe it or not, Rotary provides a stipend on a monthly basis of about $100 a month. Like a college scholarship, you're responsible for getting there and any fees, like insurance or travel fees, okay? And um, any other incidentals that you could possibly need. So this scholarship is awarded to people that are acceptable to your Rotary Clubs, to the district, and meet the moral and educational requirements that we are looking for, okay? Now, for Rotarians, it's difficult to remember all this. So I've put together a package that has all the information that a club could possibly need. There's a description of uh, this program uh, by the title of Creating Ambassadors of Peace. There is a press release that you can give to your local newspaper or a reminder. Um, there's even a, a letter that goes out from the president to all the uh, members of Rotary about this program that explains it and, and is on email so it can be sent out very easily. Uh, I've also created a letter to the local school district that explains the program and how it works. Okay, And then uh, finally there is a Rotary long-term to-dos with a timeline as well as a short-term short -term program uh, uh, bullet points and so forth and so on. So that's the mechanics of how to do it, okay? The question is, is, is it a worthwhile program, okay? We happen to have a young lady sitting in the audience tonight who is a graduate of our program, who has done well throughout life, who is married happily, two children, not only the, uh, a former bank branch manager, but now within the hierarchy of a major banking institution here. I'd just like to point her out over here. Could you wave your hand? There we go. Um, but a fourth had popped up because they owned a yacht and wanted to take me sailing around the tip of Denmark. <laughs> so no um, but amazing that a student has the ability to travel among families. You'd think it would be difficult to do once you get to know a family. You, you're there for about three months and then you move on to the next. But the benefit to that is every family lives a little differently. So you get a much better experience of the culture by experiencing a couple of different families and the way they live. Because you think about it, you know, no no one of us lives the same as the other, although we live in the same country. We all have a little different style in our, in our household, in our family. So it was nice to experience the different cultures from different families in the same country. Thank you, Tammy. Appreciate it. Let me share with you some of the things that the kids have done. Okay, about five or six years ago, uh, we had a French girl, Laura Lynn uh, Pignon, who was staying in the metropolis of Montague, uh, Massachusetts, okay? We took her down to UN Day because, of course, Rotary is the only 
non-governmental organization that is part of Road, or part of the UN. And she listened to a speaker that talked about a rotary project in India starting a school for girls. She was so taken by it that six years later she is now working at that school in India. Incredible. Um, I talked to a mom today whose daughter uh, went to Peru, Arequipa, Peru, which is south of Lima. And while she was there, uh, she was part of a Rory group that uh, catered to prenatal um, women in Peru that in order to get medical services had to walk over a mountain in order to get to the clinic. And as you can imagine, it became rather, rather difficult uh, late in term. So she and the Rotarians pointed this out to the government and they moved the clinic from one side of the mountain to the other side, which sounds like a no-brainer, but no one in Peru had thought of that before. Probably because all the officials are male and not female. Um, so today, that same woman, after receiving a, a degree in global health from um, UMass, uh, got a master's degree at the University of Copenhagen and is working in Geneva, Switzerland on a six-month project in the health field as well. One of her girlfriends at the same time that she went out uh, wanted to become a doctor. It didn't happen. She had worked at Sloan Kettering in New York and then developed some medical procedures, research procedures, protocols and now works in the pharmaceutical industries around. This year we had a young girl from um, uh, outside of Northampton. This young lady, uh, her first name is Talia, 15 years old, slight of build, very quiet. Went off to Lyon, France and about halfway through the year, she contacted me and she said, Rich, I'd like to apply to an international baccalaureate program sponsored by the University of New Mexico. So I said, well, how do you do it? Well, I have to send in my application. She sent in the application and it was promptly rejected. It was rejected because she was two or three months late. Um, and she had just found out about it and figured it out and so forth. So she called them and wrote an impassioned letter. They said, we love your writing styles. We'll interview you initially on Skype. They interviewed her Skype. The next day they contacted her and said, we'll interview you in New Mexico. Now she's sitting in France, she's 15 years old, and they want her to come to New Mexico. So she calls up and says, Rich, how am I gonna get to New Mexico? And I said, I think that's an issue between you and your parents, and what I would do is go to Rotary and see whether it's possible, and if it's not possible, then I would ask the organization to um, waive that requirement and be interviewed in Europe. Three weeks went by, I didn't hear a word, and on a Sunday morning I got a call from Atlanta Airport. She had just interviewed, her mother was sitting next to her, she thought she did well, and three days later she was accepted in the program. Now, she's living in France, she's 15 years old, she was accepted in a program, International Baccalaureate, for her junior year and senior year. She got her first choice. Where's her first choice? 70 miles east of Mumbai, India. She's gonna be living uh, at an academy, like a college campus with 260 other international high school students for the next two years. Completely paid for by this program. But it's amazing what kids will do. 
Now, I like to end on this story. About four years ago, we were down in Plymouth, Mass, district conference, and I had all the inbound students up on Saturday lunchtime, and they were talking about their experience and why being in the United States was so much fun and so rewarding to them. And we had a young Danish girl who was asked, it was the last question of the day, are you going on the West Coast trip? Bellow Tours out of Chicago puts together a trip to the West Coast. It originates in Phoenix and for the next 14 days meanders up to Los Angeles or Las Vegas and down to Los Angeles and up to San Francisco, Muir Woods and all that, Yosemite. She said, you know, when I was 10 years old, there was a Rotary Exchange student, came to my village, live on a small island in Denmark. And since that time, I always wanted to come to the United States. But, of course, it's only my mother and I, because my father died when I was a little child, and I have no money. So while I'd love to go on the, on the uh, tour, it's just not going to happen. So everybody went back and uh, we walked off and they, everybody says, oh, very nice program, Rich. Lots of fun. We love your kids. Your girls are wonderful. And thank you for being in charge of it. So that's great. So I drive home. 10.30 at night, I get a telephone call from the bar at the district conference in Plymouth, Massachusetts. It's a guy from West Springfield. He says, Rich. Do you think that girl from Denmark would like to go on the West Coast trip? I said, yeah, well, yeah, but it's $2,500 for the tour. He says, I think we can make that happen. I said, well, um, I'm going to have to call her and ask her whether her parents or her mother will give her permission. She called back and she said, my mother said it would be wonderful. But please tell the Rotarians if they can't find the money, they can't find the money. So I go to bed, and in the middle of the night, it dawned on me that we're on the East Coast. The tour starts in Phoenix. You have to fly from here to there. It's probably going to cost another five or $600. So I talked to the West Springfield Rotarian. I said, geez, I made a terrible mistake, OK? I told you $2,500. It's probably $3,100. He says, Rich. Don't worry. I got $4,000 in my hand right now. We'll give her the extra $900 for fun money while she's abroad and while she's there. So she went off and she was delighted with the trip. And it just goes to show you that Rotarians are great people. They do great things and they change lives. So with that, if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Questions, comments? Does anybody have any grandchildren? Yes? Any, anybody between 15 and 18? Okay? Once you hit that plateau, the short term program would be perfect for you. Now, you had a question. Me? Uh, I was just going to say that my, my daughter Meredith uh, went to uh, Europe many years ago on the same kind of thing. And met a very close friend and a few of their super close friends now. They come over to our house in East Long Meadow and all this kind of stuff. It's been phenomenal. It's been they're Great. close and so friendly that it's been a tremendous thing. So we're very pleased that they did it. Did. Great. Great. Yes, you had a question? Me? Yeah. No. I, no. Uh, yeah, you were just uh, stretching. This was the Jim Rental stretch. <laughs> I've got six of them, but they're all under five. Ah, they're a little bit young. In 10 years, when I'm 82, I'll come back and talk to you, okay, with my cane. Yes. You mentioned the process for the long-term program, and maybe you said it's part of the short-term program, too, but how, do you, how does a student get involved and accepted into the short-term program? Short-term program, the application is very skinny, okay? A lot of clubs like it because there's no stipend that they have to pay. They have no arranging with a local high school to get the kid accepted into, they don't find, have to find host families. So the kids go on the exchangestudent.org website, 
They look on the right hand side for short term application. The application is about three pages long. Okay? They have to write an essay, the parents write an essay, and that's about it. With any of the host families and with them doing a ho uh, family to family exchange, there is a criminal background check with your family to make sure that it's a safe environment for the incoming kids. Okay? Typically, the kids go out for three to four weeks and somebody else comes in three or four weeks. And there's about 25 different countries involved there. So I appreciate your time, okay? And uh, have a great night tonight.